Welcome to Blonde Cards and Crafts. Let's make something together. Hello crafters, welcome to my craft room. If you're new here, welcome back if you're a subscriber and thanks for dinging that subscribe button. Today we're going to make a card and I'm going to be using the Made to Surprise products. This is the pop-up book mechanism and the wiper mechanism. I'm just looking down at them so I can see and get the names right. I thought this would be a fun card make for Jane for her first birthday card. So I have everything here now off to the side ready to go. So I hope you'll join me and maybe even if you have these craft along with me. I will be using some other products as I go along and I'll introduce them to you as I show you all the pieces I have cut. So let's go ahead now and get started. So these are the mechanisms. I have the packaging here. I stick some magnetic sheets on the back and that way then I can um, have everything where I need it. And I keep those then in a wallet, a clear wallet, up there on my shelf. So I have um, everything we'll need. The first thing I've used is this. It's a six by six card base. I've made this myself. I cut it from a piece of 12 by 12. So I have a piece of 12 by six and I've scored it at six. And that'll give us our six by six card base. Onto this, I want to put some mats and layers. So I have some fab holographic paper here, as well as some other bits and pieces. So I have four pieces of holographic card and these all measure five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Now, you don't need to have as many um, of these as what I'm doing. I'm covering the front, the inside and the back. But if you don't want to put any on the back, you don't need to. And by the way, all the measurements are down in the description below. So don't worry about trying to write them down as I'm giving them to you. They'll all be there. So, like I said, I'm going to put one on the front, I have two on the inside, and then one on the back. And the reason I'm putting one on the back is so that I can add a piece to this, and then I can write my message to Jane there. So, on top of these four, I have three pieces of pattern paper, and I have three one piece of white cardstock. All four of these measure five and a half by five and a half and I layer them on my mat layers. Now I'm going to make sure I'm going to keep an eye on this candle here and I'm going to have that in the top left hand corner and that way I can make sure all my paper is orientated in the same way. And then as I've said I have the white piece here in the back that's so I can write my message to Jane. Well it'll be from myself and her granddad so that'll be on the back. So that's those pieces. Next, I want to look at the pieces that we're going to use using the dies themselves. So I have, and I'm going to start with these ones first, and I'm going to move this one out of the way until we get to it. So out of these, I'm going to use the large die, which is this one here. And I've cut this out in holographic cardstock. Now you'll notice with the die um, that there is a lovely curved top and then a slightly curved bottom. It's important that you um, make sure you keep these dies orientated in the same way so that they layer up correctly on your card. So this is the largest one and I've cut that out in holographic. Then the next one that I have cut out here is in a nice dark pink card and that goes that way. No, it doesn't Simone, it goes that way. So that's this piece. And then third, I have this one and it's in a lighter pink. So I've gone with all the pinks for this card and they'll set in like so. Now you can see here, there is a score line down the middle and Sam recommends that you um, pop this on your scoreboard and just redo the score line. They don't come out too heavy from using the die and the reason for that is they don't want it to cut into your cardstock. So it's nice to just have the impression there of where our score line could be and if you want to um, go over that again yourself you can. So there are my three book layers. 
on top of that then we get these two dies and they are for to go here and here and I've die cut these out in white you can see them here so they'll go on top there now you can have them so that they're layered like so and you can have a nice even border going the whole way around or you can bring them in like the ones behind to have that book look. Now Sam recommends that when you're um, using these that you can take a scoring tool and I have one just over here and that you add a little curve into your cardstock. This will help it to sit better when it's in its shape and I will do that with all of these pieces. Before I curve my white pieces I want to stamp onto them and I have some stamps in my stamp positioner which I have just here. Oh. And you can see it here, I have my sentiments already in here that I'm going to stamp on these two. I'm using this. It's the uh, Made to Surprise Sentiments and it's an A5 stamp set. So what I have done, this is all one stamp and I have cut apart my Today from Is All About You. I have no problem with cutting into my stamps. Some people are very nervous about doing that, but they just join back up together, no problem. So I'm using Today Is All About You. I'm using Big Birthday Wishes. I'm using It's Your Day as well. So I'll have It's Your Day. I'm also using the uh, Happy Birthday Sweetheart. And again, I've cut into this one. So I have Happy Birthday Sweetheart just here. So I'm going to stamp that later on. We'll do that together. But I have that all prepped and ready to go. Okay. So next I want to share with you the second die set that I'm going to be using. And this is the wiper mechanism die set. So this will give a pop up to our card. So you could have it as a book card. And pop these down onto your card base but if you want a wiper mechanism popping up then you use this now there's some hearts this piece is called the saddle this is the wiper mechanism and then we have two um, square dies here these are for using if you want to die out die cut out some mats and layers so this is the mechanism piece just here now, if you're doing a pop up from the top and also from the bottom, you'll cut this whole piece. You'll cut one full piece in order for the mechanism and you'll also cut it a second time. The reason Sam recommends that you cut it the second time is that you can cut these little legs off. So I have one I've prepared here earlier. I'm just having this popping up one time. So I have cut my piece like you can see here. I didn't cut this all the way down. I didn't feel I needed it because I'm going to cut this leg off. So I've die cut it out once and then I've die cut it out a second time. And what I've done is you can see there's a score line here and a score line here. I cut along those two score lines as recommended by Sam and then I have glued these on together and you can really see well here how it's glued on top. I used two different colour whites so it would show up better on the video. So this piece is our mechanism piece. Now into this we also need to die cut out this piece. This piece is going to be um, in the center of our mechanism and it'll be part of the cradle. So I have that die cut out once. Then I have die cut out this piece twice as recommended by Sam. And I have two of those here. And there's score lines on these. We'll get to um, folding those later. 
And then I've also die cut out two of these. These nest into the cradle and they support our book. These two pieces here, they also support our book inside our card base. So I have all those cut. I've also cut the saddle piece, that's it here. And this will attach to the mechanism. You can have it as long or as short as you like. The same with this leg. We can cut this down if we don't need it so tall. Sometimes you can use this when you're making your card if you need an extra bit of support. I may not use that this time around, but I've cut it just in case. So all these are all the pieces that I've cut. So now I want to have a look at the additions that I'm going to use. This is to pretty up our card. So just let me get those dies now. So these are all the extras that I'm using. I'm throwing everything at this card and these will make all these extra bits here that you can see. So I've used this sentiments die set and I link everything down below. Don't panic. They'll all be linked to Craftstash UK where you can purchase what's available. When Sam's collections come out, they go like hotcakes. They really fly. And what happens is once they're gone, Craftstash generally order a second lot in. So I'll have links down below to the products that I'm using that are available. They're affiliated links. So if you purchase these items using my links below, they're affiliated links. You won't be charged any extra, but I'll get a little kickback, which helps me to having all this in my craft room. So I'll leave links down below to the products that I'm using and that are available from Craftstash. So I've used this uh, sentiments die set for my happy birthday, which you can see here. I've also used this, it's the baby A6 stamp and die set. I've used the die number one. I've used that twice in order to put Jane's number for her birthday here. Uh, I've also used this die. It's the little uh, baby onesie. This die cuts out two pieces, the onesie and the heart. So I've die cut this in lots of different colours and then I've mixed them all up in between. So all the hearts I've kind of popped around to the different onesies. I've also die cut out my bear. And I find when I'm die cutting out the bear, the best thing to do is if you get a piece of cardstock and I'm just going to grab one here. From the front if you fold it in half and then put your die on top when you put this through your machine it will actually die cut out your bear perfectly and it'll also give you a nearly or mostly die cut out image behind and I find that really um, handy you can see here it's um, embossed where the cut lines would be on this bottom piece but it gives me a base then to add my top pieces to so I did this about four or five times so I'd have a bottom base to use and then I die cut it out lots of times in different colours. Alicia my daughter who's the mom to Jane her favourite colours are purples. I love pinks and I love the kind of creamy tones. So you can see here I've mixed all the colours up but I've used these four colours throughout the whole lot of my die cuts here. So on this one I have stamped the number one and you see that here it's on this. This is from the bookmarks and wax seal stamp and die set. So I use the one and I also use the letters here. I use them on the bottle that I made and you can see again, I've die cut this out twice, once in the white and then once in the colored cardstock. And I've used the letters then to stamp Jane's name. So that's that one. That's this one. I've also used the Baby Editions die set with the ducks, the pin 
um, the safety pin and the bottle. So I have, and the bib, sorry, I forgot to mention that one. So I, I have the bibs here. And again, you can see it die cuts out in two parts. I die cut them out in four colors. And then I move the little star around. So each bib would have a different colored star. I did three of the little ducks and I made three of the little pins and three of the little bottles. This one is a floral editions die set and this is um, this is for a different uh, card style but I wanted the little fairy so I've taken it from this. This is my little fairy here. I die cut her out in the purple cardstock and in the holographic and I did some paper piecing. I hope you can see that well there. So I cut away where the back of the pony and her head would be there. So I think it just gives a lovely look to her wings. So that's all my pieces and parts ready to go. The only other thing I did was I die cut out Jane's name. And to do that, I used a die from my stash. This is one that I got when I started crafting. I have no idea. <laughs> what die set it is but I, I use it a lot of the time. I find having the capitals and the lower case it's really handy when I want to fit a name in to a small space so rather than going all capitals I was able to do a capital for the J and then the lower case. And finally the pattern paper that I used that you would have seen at the beginning is from this set. It's the occasions background and it's this one here. I loved the vibrant colours that's in these pattern papers. So that's the ones that I've gone with here. So now we have everything cut and ready to go. I sat down for about two hours uh, yesterday I was just watching some YouTube while I was die cutting out all these pieces. Um, I probably won't use them all but I have them all here ready to go. So let's go ahead now and assemble our card. So the first thing I'm going to do is score and burnish my um, mechanism pieces. So with this one we want to fold on this line and fold on this one and this one then should pop in. So we want a V-shape with that one and a V-shape with this one. And I'm just really encouraging the, um, the paper to go where I want it to. So that's the first one, fold it in and then this one is the same. We want to fold the V down into itself like so and those two then sit along like that. So this is our mechanism for in our card. Next is this piece. This piece wants to get folded here and here and they're all mountain folds and here. Our little tabs here on the outside are going to sit in here. So we'll have this little tab here will get glued into place in here. And I hope you can see that all right. Then we're going to pinch these in And we're going to add glue onto this and we're going to glue that into place down there. So it should fit down in here with glue on the tabs. And that is where that's going to go. When that's then in place, these pieces here, we'll fold those back like so. And these pieces, they fit on here. So you can see here, those two 
fit together. If you were to use the smaller one, it wouldn't fit on there, right? So that's how you know where this piece goes. So when this piece is glued in here, these pieces then glue onto this with these little tabs set open like so. These two tabs will then hold our book, which we have over there. They will sit on top. So I just wanted to show you how this works rather than trying to do it, putting all this into the card. I just figured it might be easier to see how these all work together. So we have our mechanism piece. We'll put glue on these two tabs here. They will sit in either side of the score line here in the middle. So it'll fit in there. And then we'll pinch it over a little and then that will sit in there. So when it closes like so, it's all fitting in there, lovely and snug. And then the mechanism falls down into it underneath. So that's all the mechanism pieces and we'll get to fitting that in shortly. I just thought it would be helpful to show it to you that way rather than trying to do it all in with the card. These little pieces then, they stabilize the book part inside our card base. We'll fold the, this score line here on the outside and this one here. We don't need to score the middle one. So it's just the two outside ones that'll get, that'll get um, burnished. The score line will be burnished. So those two one on each end and we'll make sure they're nice and straight. And again, there's a score line there. You can burnish that with your scoreboard if you like. Sam does recommend it, but um, that's it there. So that's those two pieces. So that's all our mechanism pieces there ready to go. I'm going to put them off to the side. What I want to look at now is these two pieces. I want to stamp them and then I'm going to start assembling all our layers into our card base, assembling then our book part and then adding them all in together. So let's go ahead and do that next. So I have my two white pieces in and I've made sure that the curve is to the top on both sides. I have my stamps in my stamp positioner so I can just go ahead and stamp them down. So I'll add a little, add my magnets there making sure that I'm missing the cardstock. So I'm going to put um, Jane, um, my die cut letters here, and I'm going to add my die cut number here. So I'm going to make sure that they are in there nice and straight. So my pieces are level up against the edge here. Perfect. So now I'm going to ink them up and I'm going to use some ink from my stash. I'm going to use this one here. This is my Versifying Claire and it's Purple Delight and it's what I used on the teddy bears. So I'll ink these up. And I'm just looking to make sure there's no ink left on the stamps. That's a good indication then that they've stamped well on the paper. So I'm happy with that now. I'm going to leave that dry in place and then I'm going to take this off once I've, I'm putting them onto the book itself. So now I'm going to start assembling our card base. So let's do that. 
I'm going to use some of my uh, Kalal glue. I decant it into this bottle. Um, I find it handier to use. So let's go ahead now and add our mats and layers into that. So now we have our card base ready, except for our panels for the back. And I'll do that when we get to there. We'll do that at the end. And I have my front and inside ready to go. I will embellish the front of this, um, but I won't make too much of a fuss of it because I want it to be displayed open. So now I'm going to glue my um, book pieces together. Now with this, Sam has recommended that you put some red liner tape or double sided tape along the back. That way these can be lifted so you could have it like pages that can be moved. You can also stamp some numbers from the um, stamp set that um, I used earlier. The one with the numbers on it. <laughs> um, but I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to just glue these flat down. Um, what I will do is give them a little bit of a curve. And I'll use my scoring tool to do that. Now, sometimes it can be easier to actually pull the paper up. It, it can be hard to kind of get a grasp and get this curved and that curved and get it all nice. Whereas if you put your cardstock in here and pull up, you'll get a curve as well. And I find that the handiest and you get a nice even curve. And then this will fold on the score line so that the book will close. But you'll have these nice um, curves into the paper. So I have done that there. And I'm going to do that with the other two. So I'm going to score these using my scoring tool. So I'm going to pop it in here and find a track. You can see here I have um, marked my tracks. I just find it handier for me when I want to do something like this for scoring. So I have it in there. It's nice and level at the top. And I have a track here so I can score along. I'm going to do the same then with this one. Pop it into the middle. Make sure it's up and then score down along. And I might just use this one. There we go. So we can fold our card and they should fold over nicely like so. And the same with this one. Lovely. And then we can burnish them using our scoring tool. And again, I'm going to burnish the curve into them by doing it this way. And again, this way. There we go. So there is our book and that needs to go that way up. And then we can, like I said, you can glue these in place or you can just put some double sided tape on the back. So it really is up to you. So I was going to glue them, but I think I'll use some double sided tape on them. some here. This is Creative Craft Products tape. I'm going to put my double sided tape now across the two pink ones. I also put it on the holographic one on the back 
you don't need to do that so don't do that and don't forget to add some onto your white panels as well then you can just nestle them down and i'm lining up the score lines with these three pieces that should all fold then this will cause a bit of bulk in the center of our card but um, it shouldn't be too much so you could just take that now and you could stick that in there and have that like so in your card if you wanted and that would look perfect but we're going to add our mechanism to them so let's go ahead and do that next so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add this piece which is our mechanism piece into our card this piece wants to sit in at the middle so if you can imagine halfway here on this piece and halfway there now you can take a ruler i have a ruler here and take a pencil and put a little mark in there at three inches no one's going to see it but it's a good idea for you to have it there so you know for yourself. So what you want to do is you want to add glue to this part here and this part here. And what we're going to do is we're going to sit that in. We're going to sit it just next to the score line because this wants to be able to close and if you sit it over the score line it's going to be very bulky and it won't sit properly. So you need that to sit nicely. You can also put a little mark there in the middle of your mechanism piece. So when you bring these two together, you know that they are going to sit nicely. You want to make sure that this piece is straight. So use your score line as a good gauge. And when you're happy the two of them are in there like that, we're going to close the card over and we're going to leave it to dry don't be tempted to open the card let it dry this is the one thing that Sam really does stresses with this to allow your glue to dry or to set so that it has strength then so I'm going to do that I'm going to use my quick grab glue I'm using the cosmic shimmer glue it's what Sam tends to use um, so I'm going with that I figure she knows best and I'm going to add that to those on both sides and add that into the card. So it's a little bit cold in my craft room. So it's sometimes I need to give it a good little prod in order to get it going. So I'm going to add my glue to the back here. And you want to get a good amount in there. For all this piece. You could use tape if you prefer to use tape. Um, but I'm just following along what Sam did. And don't forget, I'll leave a link to her um, card, her single pop-up card as well. I'll leave a link to her video down below in the description. So now... I'm going to bring this up here so it's just shy of the score line. It's nice and straight. My edge here is nice and straight to the score line. And I'm going to add glue now to this side and then I can close the whole thing and leave it to dry or set, whatever you like to call it. But while this is drying, I'm going to embellish the front of the card and I'm going to use some of the pieces that we have here that we made earlier. So that'll kind of, it'll um, allow then this piece to dry. So I'm going to go ahead now and do that. 
So I have die cut out a heart shape. This is a die from my stash and I'll leave links to it down below. It's a Love From Lizzie die that I've used. Um, as far as I know, this is all sold out. So if you have any circles or squares or ovals, whatever you like. I know Sam used the um, bookmark die on hers. I liked the idea of using the heart because there's hearts um, on our pattern paper. I just want to use that to give a base for some of our little pieces here to sit on. So I'm going to use that one and I think I'll use the Jane on the bottle. I'll use one of the little ducks so I can build up all these little pieces here and maybe a onesie as well and I'm just going to pop these on the front because um, like I said this isn't for you know to be displayed this way it's to be displayed open So now we have our card front done. I'm going to embellish it with some little hearts and some Spectrum Noir pen and some um, accent glaze as well. But I have it more or less where I want it at this stage and it allowed the mechanism inside to dry. So I'm delighted with that now. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add this piece. So we want to add glue onto our two outside tabs and stick them in as I explained before. So I'm going to do that now. So I have glue on this tab and I'm going to stick that in here and it sits in there nicely just next to the score line. Then I'm going to close this up and I'm going to feed this little tab in there so it sits in to the score line as well. And as I do that, I'm going to close this card base over. I hope you can see it's tucked in there just in there and I'm going to close that over and pinch it and again I'm going to give that a minute and let the glue set or dry in there before I open it so let's give that a minute to do that so that should be more or less set now let's open that and see it is and it you can see there our mechanism folds underneath that and closes. So we've that part done right. Next, we want to add these two. And I'm just going to pop my um, tape in there. So we have a square and a rectangle. And it's the square pieces we want to glue on here and here. So again, I'm going to use my quick grab glue and I'm going to add them in there now. Again, I'm going to close that over, pinch it and give that 30 seconds or so for the glue to dry there as well. So now let's have a look. And again, that is open. You can see these two have closed up on each other. We just want to open those up so that our book now can sit on top. Now with this piece, Sam recommends that we give it a bit of a curve. So I'm going to use my scoring tool to do that. It just helps this when our book piece is in there. We will be trimming this off. So we're gonna take our book piece and this is going to sit in here. 
when we put that into place, you want to make sure that when the card closes, that as this sits in here, that it's going to sit inside our card base. So you want to make sure that that is going to sit in here, in the cradle. That's what this piece is called, the cradle. So we want to sit that in the cradle, but we want to make sure that it isn't up too much this way or out too much that way or down too much. You want to center this within the card. So that's what I'm going to do. And then this piece should then curve up for us and out of the way. So I'm going to sit that in there like so and I'm going to make sure that it is centered in there nicely. So I'm going to add my glue to these two pieces. And I'm going to pop that in there and I'm going to make sure that it is centered in there nicely. So this piece is a little bit fiddly. It doesn't have to be perfect. But if you can get it as centered as possible, it will make it all the easier and look all the nicer. So I think I have that in there nicely and I'm just going to close that over. Now again, you need to leave this piece for at least a minute. Allow the glue to dry or set, whatever you like to call it, but allow the glue to dry before you start opening and closing it. So I'm going to give it a minute to dry and then I'll come back to you. So while this is drying inside, I'm going to pop my happy birthday die cuts that I've done. I nearly forgot about them, <laughs> to be honest. But while I remember now, I'm going to add them on the front. I knew it was missing something. It didn't look right from the picture I had in my head. So yeah, I'm going to glue those down now and stick them on over. So I'm going to use my quick grab glue to do that. Now, if we open up inside, you'll see that the inside part now, the um, book part isn't very stable, but that's what we're going to use these two pieces for. We're going to add one to the bottom and we're going to add one to the top so that it'll hold it in place. So when the card opens and closes, this part then will be able to slide up and slide down. So. I'm going to do it to one first. Now you can see here there are three score lines, but we're only folding it on two places on the top score line and the bottom score line. So I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue to this first tab. And I'm going to fold this back behind. That is going to sit here. So my mechanism is up there. It's going to sit here about a half an inch or so in and down. And then I'm going to add some glue on the bottom tab. And then I'm just going to close this over. And that will grab on that one. And then we can do the same then with the other one. And I'm again going to add some glue. I'll just pop that down there. Some glue onto this tab. And the bottom tab. I'm going to leave the bottom tab flat, but this one I'm going to fold over and I'm going to place it more or less in the same spot but it'll be up at the top here. So in a little and down a little and then I'll fold that one, press that one 
and that should have them both in place. So we put it in the bottom left corner and in the top right corner on our book. Now I'm going to leave them to dry. So now that should be dry. Let's go ahead and open it and fingers crossed. And there we go. Isn't that fab? I do love this. Now this is too long. So we're going to cut some of this off. We're going to add some of our little pieces now here to this. And then we'll stick on our Jane and our number one onto this piece here. So I'm going to speed up while I embellish uh, the card and uh, you can watch me doing it. At this point you see I'm adding the saddle on and that is just to give my um, die cut images a place that they can nestle. Now you'll see where the duck is there. On the very left hand side I will actually cut off the excess of the saddle and I'll do that with you later on. Where the pink baby bottle is there, I actually removed that and put the yellow one in its place. I prefer the look of that. So here we are, we have our finished card and I have to say I'm delighted with it. I hope Jane likes it and I hope her parents like it. I think this is a keepsake card. I just loved using all the stamps and dies from the made to surprise pop up book mechanism die. I have it all here so I don't get it wrong. I do love this card. I think there's a lot going on but for a first birthday card sure it should be special and you can see there look it does work beautifully each time. I love all the icons that we've used and all the imagery. I'm very pleased with it and as you can see on the back I've added again some of the icons or the die cuts there. I've less, left the rest blank because I know if I stamp a sentiment in here I'm going to have very little room to write my message and I'm going to write a message there because I know Alicia will keep these cards for Jane so it'll you know she'll be able to look back on it when she's older. So that is it. That is our pop-up book card. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial. It has taken a while. I'm going to link Sam's video down below in the description as well as the products I've used. And any links you can find them down there. If you've enjoyed my video I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're a subscriber thanks for subscribing and if not you might consider click on the subscribe button and ding the bell so the next time I post a video you'll be notified of that. So I'm going to leave it there folks I leave you with some pictures and until next time I hope you've enjoyed my video. Take care and bye for now. Bye!